enough talking. Let's get to writing some code, right? That's the part that's exciting. So now that we've determined our method signatures, each of the groups can take that information, go their separate ways, write their separate stuff, and then come back together to assemble it. And so I think what I'm gonna do actually is write the team two stuff first, just to kind of prove this point. We don't have to do this in any particular order. And so I'm gonna go ahead and build a class here. So I'm gonna right click on my project name, Hangman Fun. I'm gonna say add a new item, and I'll just maybe call this one Hangman Tools and add that. And it's gonna go build a class for me that these two classes are gonna to work together to make this game work. Now, as I go look at uh, what the different things are that I need to do, the first one is to get a random word. And so I'm gonna go in and just take that method signature, I could even copy and paste it that we've agreed on um, and drop it in here. And so I'm going to return a random word, the name of the method is get random word, and then we have this opening closing parenthesis um, to go in and, and uh, get this random word for us to be able to guess. And so how are we gonna get that? How are we gonna get a random word? Well, it makes sense that we would just have a huge list of words, and then we're gonna go pick a random one out of that. And if you've done any of this before, it's pretty easy if we get a random number to go to a array of words and just pick one of those spots. And so the arrays that we've worked with so far are primitive type arrays. So a string, opening, closing, square bracket there, and this is a list of words equals a new string array with 10 elements or whatever it is on there. And this would work great, we can use this. But when we declare this, this uh, primitive type of arrays, then the problem is, is we can't add to it or remove from it. And if we did go into the middle and set one of them to blank, it doesn't shift down, it doesn't do anything like that. Everybody moves into their apartment and they just stay there, right? And so we use these all the time, they work great. But sometimes we want the array to be dynamic, meaning we can add to it when we want to, we can take away when we need to. And so I wanna show you a different type of array. And so in C Sharp, uh, if we wanna do a dynamic array, we can use a list. Now when we do a list, notice that it has these angle brackets on them, the greater than and less than sign. And it wants for us in the list to indicate the type of information that we wanna store in that list. And in this case, we're gonna be storing strings. So I'm gonna go in there and put strings. And as it turns out, here in our environment, um, in, in uh, Visual Studio and um, this console application uh, in .NET, it's, it's providing for us a lot of help here. And it, and it gives us, it says, you wanna do this? It's guessing at what we wanna do. And the answer is, yeah, we wanna do that. So we're gonna create a list of type string that is gonna be called words and then we're going to initialize that list. And because we're creating an instance of an object, we need to have those parentheses on there in case there's a constructor. Now, maybe there is a constructor that goes with this, but even if there isn't, we still need to have the parentheses because there's the potential for a constructor to be there. It indicates to us that it's this class that we're building an instance of. And so this is how we build a list here. And then we can go in and just um, build a list here. So I can say, uh, words.add, and I can put in there, hello. All right, and then I can say words.add, and I gotta think of a word. I'm just gonna glance down at my desk here, and the word, first word I saw on a receipt for uh, parking, actually, was customer. And then I glanced down at the other side of my desk here, and I've got a word here uh, for an oil change. Synthetic is the first word I saw there. And so I can go in and, and add words. I can also remove words. So I can go in and say, uh, remove from this array later on sometime, it wouldn't make sense right here, uh, the word customer. And then everything in that array, that, that one spot gets deleted and everything shifts down. And so this is a dynamic array that we can go in and change as needed, right? And so we can set it up this way, but that's a lot of overhead to try and get this set up. Um, if we're putting stuff into the list from the beginning, we can actually just 
as we initialize it, put some words in. So I could do it in an alternate way. I could do opening, closing, curly braces there, and then I need to go ahead and put a semicolon at the end to close that uh, initialization statement. But then in here, I can just put words in directly. So hello, customer, synthetic. All right, and then that would remove the need to, to do separate add statements. So this is when I'm building it in the first place, I can add to that list, that dynamic list of strings um, just by typing the word in on initialization. And so let's do, let's go get a, a, a number of words. I'll go out here and just say, generate a list of random words, right? And it will go pull up some website here and I'll get a list and I'll say, uh, there's one that has some words. Let's just use these. I'll just, so I'll go in here and say, uh, made, you know, I picked a website with a lot of ads, stranger, uh, offbeat, bleach, And laugh. And again, at some point, we'll, we'll just do five words here. But you could go in and and um, go get a you know a, a huge list of words from the internet. Import those. Um, there's lots of different ways we can do this. But for now, just to begin and start testing, we'll start with those five words. All right. So we've got the list of words. How do I get a random? element from that list and the answer is in order to be able to do that I'm going to need a random number generator so I'm going to come up here and create an instance of a random number generator we do that by calling the random class giving it a name and that is going to be equal to a new random class and then once I have that I could create a variable here a string this is going to be our word so string word equals blank to begin with but then I can take that word and fill it in by saying word is equal to let's go out to the words array at the spot and then the spot that we get is going to be a random number so I'm going to go that to that random number generator and I think it's a next um, I'm going to go get the the next number and then out of parentheses it wants out of how many values do we want this number well, I want it however big the list is. And so I could put and say, well, there's five words in there, but then if I add a sixth word, then I need to go change this number. And so much better to keep this dynamic by saying, let's go out to the words array and get the length of it, uh, count of it. <laughs> let's go get the count. And that count is going to, if I put six words in now, it's going to be six. And so I'm going to go get a number out of six. And so it'll give me zero through five and those are the different apartment numbers right and um, it's going to get that go get a random word from the list and then in order for us to just test this out we could just for now uh, say console dot well let's do it on the other side so then what this is going to do in the end is return that word so oh my goodness see i start seeing this end of the video approach and I start really hurrying and it just happens every time and I start messing up. So return the word. So I can save that. Now on this side, just to test it out, I can say console.writeLine and then I can call an instance of that class. Now I'm going to need to create an instance of it. So hangman tools and I can just call that whatever I want to. I'll say ht equals new hangman tools and then here I can say ht.get a random word. I can call the method that I just created out on the other side. I save that, I run this. And sure enough, it picks a random word. If I close this and run it again, it's got for me the same word. That's not helping me, but it's, you know, that happens. There's a, there's a different word, so mate. So I've now created a little method that can be used in my main class that generates the random word. All right, we'll continue on in the next video. Spencer out.